The SFX3, as you're probably already aware, sounds pretty amazing, but the feature that I'm finding the most useful at the moment is the fact that it also doubles up as an 8-channel USB audio interface. If you've seen my video, which is called Should You Buy an Axe FX3, which I will link in the video description, I talked about this briefly and sort of just glazed over the USB recording facilities, but in this video I want to dive a bit deeper into it. I want to show you guys how I actually use this thing to cut great sounding guitars that can also be reamped later and can also be used in a professional capacity. So let's have a look at some of the very basic connections and some of the settings and then I'm going to fire up a Pro Tools session and show you how I would actually use it in a recording context. Okay, let's have a look at the back panel. Uh, there is a USB audio connection right here which I'm running to the input of my Mac Mini. Obviously I've got power for my Axe FX3. There are some other digital connections like SPDIF and AES if you want to use your Axe FX3 with another digital audio interface. It integrates pretty seamlessly and then I'm running it like this. I'm connecting output one to my Atom A7X studio monitors, which means that I will be able to essentially have no latency when I'm tracking guitars. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's just quickly go over to the Axe FX front panel and have a look at some setup stuff on the main menu. So before you do go and use the USB recording in the Axe FX3, we want to do some basic setup stuff. Hit the setup menu when you're on the main menu press the E controller, go to in out, and we can scroll across until we get to this USB input level section. I would suggest setting all of these to zero dB for optimum performance if you haven't done that already. And you can also scroll back across to the digital in and out. You know, if you're using SPDIF or anything like that, you can set your USB buffer size here. Uh, I normally just set it to the highest because I use studio monitors connected directly to the Axe FX3 to track. And you can also see you want your input source most of the time when you're tracking guitar to analog if you are doing reamping and you want to use stuff like the, say like triggering gates and stuff like that, you would want to set it to five and six. But we'll chat about that, I think at a later time. Let's get into the nitty gritty of actually recording some stuff. I've got my guitar, my PRS SC245 plugged into input one of my Axe FX3. I'm running a pretty simple preset. It is just input, amp, and cab. I'm using the Ubershaw model. This is a preset I've done quite a bit of recording with recently. And then that signal is going through output one. I've got my studio monitors connected to output one on the Axe FX. So the reason I'm doing this is I can play and monitor directly from the Axe FX3 without introducing any latency. If I went into Pro Tools and then monitored that back out of the Axe FX3, that's gonna introduce latency just by the nature of the fact I'm going into the door. So this way is super handy for recording guitars because I've got my Axe FX3 set up, I can play no latency, and separately the Axe is sending USB to Pro Tools. Uh, very, very quickly, uh, you'll notice that I don't have any like extra stuff to like cut a DI or anything like that and I don't need to because it's all included over USB. Uh, one other thing, make sure in your door that you set up the playback engine to be your Axe FX. Uh, you can see the hardware buffer size was quite high there and you've got all your ins and outs uh, routed. I, this was plug and play for me with Pro Tools. I don't know how it works with other doors if you're using Reaper. You know, Logic Studio One, it should be pretty much plug and play, which is pretty cool. So, say we go to create a new track, and I'll just create a new mono track. We've got a couple of options uh, regarding the input. So, if you go to the little in out section, you go to interface, you can see here from the drop down menu, input one is output one block left or right. So, essentially, these two here, these stereo channels, are going to feed whatever is coming out of output one into Pro Tools. So in this case, this is gonna be the amp and cab sound of my Axe FX3. Then, these inputs here, you'll see input three, which in reality, obviously, this is in one, this is in two, left and right. Uh, these are whatever output two is seeing. So in this case, output two is seeing nothing because I don't have it in there. So if you selected this, it wouldn't record anything. Now, here's the interesting part. I mentioned not tracking a DI before or not connecting a separate line to track a DI. The Axe 3 is super handy for this because these inputs here automatically just take whatever's hitting input one and route it straight into Pro Tools. So if I wanna track a DI, I can do it like that and I will do that on this. And then these inputs here, input seven, that is gonna be what feeds back 
into Pro Tools if I want to reamp guitars. So we'll cover that one in a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to create another mono track because I'm going to cut whatever's coming out of output one, my affected, you know, amp and cab sound. So I will just leave that track as is. But then for audio two, this will be my DI. So I'll call this one Uber and I'll call this one DI. Then what I can do is arm both of those and I'm gonna mute them, this is another thing as well. Uh, if you've got Pro Tools set up uh, the way I have, this is gonna play back whatever is feeding into here. So I'm gonna mute these two tracks because I'm already monitoring out of the Axe FX3. Uh, that's one kind of hack. Otherwise it will sound really phasey because you've got latency, uh, which essentially is the signal plus a signal with, with some latency. So I just set them to mute because I'm already hearing what's coming out of the axe uh, through my studio monitors, which is super handy. And as you can see, if I play some guitar, keep in mind, this is gonna be my little camera audio. You're not hearing the DI guitar sound. This is coming out of my monitors, so it's gonna sound like balls. And you'll see these little meters light up. Fantastic, let's just record a riff and we can have a look at what each of these guys track like. Sweet, I'll play that back for you guys, uh, hopefully with the actual audio, not just the camera audio there when I go and edit this. Anyway, let's have a quick listen back to that because we should have the wet guitar sound. And again, sounds like balls, camera, microphone, don't judge it too harshly. But over here on the DI track, something completely different. And that is my DI guitar, which is super handy. And in a, I guess in any sort of like professional recording capacity, uh, even if you're not planning on reamping the guitars, if you're playing heavily distorted guitars, let me make these tracks bigger for you guys, just so that you can see them. I should have done this at the start. So I make the track height large and we'll zoom in a bit. You'll notice if you're say, you've got drums and bass and stuff like that, and you're an audio engineer and you need to go back and align stuff because you know uh, the guitar player tends to rush. Well, not that I do that. Uh, you can see that the distorted guitar signal is really hard to find the transients because it's so distorted and so kind of saturated and compressed. Whereas here, you can clearly see on the DI track, the, the transients. So uh, even if you're not planning on doing any reamping, tracking a DI is really handy for post-production editing. And furthermore, you don't really have to do anything with the Axe FX3. You just basically, it's already got that channel five and six set up for DI guitars, uh, and you can just have it in there and keep your audio engineer super duper happy. However, if you do want to reamp guitars, this is what you can do. So I'm going to create another audio track, and what we'll test is how well this reamps. So what I've done here in my setup in the in and outs, I have gone into the bus section, and I set bus five and six and routed it to uh, channel seven and eight of the Axe FX3. Right, let's go to Axe Edit and replace this. Well, not even replace this input block. I'll just leave it as it is, but I will add a USB input and route that in there. So what's gonna happen now is, if I take my DI signal, rather than send it to the built-in output, I'll send it to bus five and six. What this is gonna do now is send this particular track out of Pro Tools, into the USB input of my Axe FX3, into the amp, into the cab, and then out of the output. So if I set this new audio track, which I'll call reamp, I can set that to input one. And then what's gonna happen is I can play this DI track back and make changes on the fly as I listen, which is really, really great if you're trying to dial in the perfect guitar sound for a track. This gives you so much flexibility when you're mixing because like, you know what? There's too much gain on the original guitar track. Turn the gain down. So I'll give you guys an example of that as I do it. So I'll arm this, hit record. And uh, yeah, this all works hopefully pretty seamlessly.
Sweet, so there is the reamped guitar track and I tweaked a few things there. If I make this large again, that's pretty cool. You'll see it's, yeah, it's looking pretty similar, but I did end up tweaking it out at the end. So you can do a lot of on the fly stuff. And this is kind of cool, say you're mixing and you want, you want like a weird effect where it's like, okay, in the axe effects, I want the sound of the treble knob on the amp being turned down, which is really hard to do when you're tracking guitar, but you can do it if you're reamping. So that is how I would go about using the USB audio feature in the Axe FX3. I would use it to track my main guitars. I would also cut a DI at the same time, like I said, just for, you know, just for convenience if I do need it and if I am reamping anything. So what I will do in this session, I think, is I'm going to drag in a track that I need to record a guitar solo on. And what I'm going to do over here in Axe Edit is I'll add a few things to this particular patch. So let's just add a little bit of stereo delay because I want to play a, I want to play a guitar solo. I want some delay on there while I'm tracking, but I don't necessarily want to commit to that delay on the recording. So let's just say we take the stereo BBD. Uh, it should sound pretty sweet with this particular sound. I'm also going to turn the gain up because more gain is more fun with a lot of these things. And this is what it sounds like. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Again, you're listening to the camera audio, not the actual sound of the Axe FX. Keep that in mind. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, what? How would I go about tracking with that, but not recording with the delay? Well, this is kind of cool. We've got this uh, output two feature here. So what I'll do is I'll go amp cab and delay is coming out of output one, but I'm not going to directly record output one. I'm going to record output two. So this is kind of cool. What I will next do is let's just say, let's delete all of this stuff. Actually, I won't delete that because I need it for later when I edit this. Uh, let's drag this tune in. Let's see, how do I do that? Import, we'll import this audio track. I'll find the solo and then I'm gonna cut it with the delay on, but then I will only record the dry guitar track so that uh, when I send it to the mix engineer, they can do whatever the hell they want to it. So let's just drag this guy in. Okay, I found the part in the track where I want to record the solo. So uh, a lot of the time uh, when you're sort of like putting a guitar solo in a mix, really common to add stereo delay and reverb and stuff like that. I'm just going to track it with some delay on there, but I'm going to change my input over here. Instead of being the output one, it'll be output two, which doesn't have delay on it. So I'm going to be tracking the solo with delay. I've said this a bunch of times. I already know I just really want to stress, stress it because it's, you know, this is like a problem. If I wanted to do this with anything else, I would have to have my dry guitar signal going into Pro Tools and then chuck a plug in on it. And then I'd have latency, which I don't want. In this case, I've got delay on output one and then I'm just recording the dry guitar track and I could either process it with plugins that I've got in Pro Tools or I could reamp it using the Axe FX3 because I'm also gonna cut the DI as well. So we'll arm those tracks, we'll turn the reamp track off and uh, I'm just gonna play a guitar solo, which I totally haven't planned out or anything. I'll just rip it over and then uh, we can have a listen to it. I hope it goes well. Yeah, that'll do for now for the purpose of this. Uh, you can see that uh, my track volume was too low, so my guitar was too loud. But if I have a listen back to that now, uh, you can see here I've got the DI. Actually, I don't have the DI, that's being reamped. Uh, let me do this if I send that out of the main output. can hear how sloppy I am but then if we have a listen to the track that I recorded here it's just gonna be the dry guitar no delay on it
Uh, listening back to that, what I can do is go, okay, cool, let's reamp that now. And I can have a listen to the track and play around with the delay and really get it right in the mix. I, I won't do that because I feel like I'm rambling on with this video. But that's the idea. So I could use that same reamping trick and I could use all the great built in effects in the Axe FX3 and I can commit that in there. Or alternatively, I can use some plugins or something like that. So hopefully that kind of lays out how you can use the Axe FX3 uh, as your sort of central hub for tracking guitars, which I really, really like. The DI feature, like I said, it's one of those things that, um, you know, if you're just recording guitar at home for fun, you don't need to use that. But if you're recording, you know, in any sort of professional capacity, it's so, so handy and so easy to use. If you're not using the USB audio feature on this and you're running into another interface, all you'd have to do here is say, okay, cool, go into input one and say we'll make output three that's the DI. It's going input one straight to output three. You take a cable from that, send it to your interface, you're done. And you can send the, you know, any of these outputs with the processing on them to your other interface or, you know, to mic pre's or stuff like that. So that's pretty straightforward as well. And obviously the reamping feature is so, so handy. Uh, there was some guitars that I tracked a couple of months ago now for the, uh, <laughs> at some point released uh, Ragdoll album that we're working on and I was listening back to it uh, recently and it's sort of like yeah the guitars once once bass got added and once we sort of added some more production the actual guitar track sounded a bit lackluster and in the past I would have really worried about that and now it's just kind of like oh cool I can just reamp it that's so easy you know hook the axe up with USB tweak some knobs and uh, that that particular thing I think is so handy because you can rather than have to worry about get the tone and the performance 100% right, you can just work on the performance, which at the end of the day is what we're going for. And then once everything is in the mix, you can fine tune your guitar tones. And you know maybe that sound that you were super inspired by, which made you play really well, doesn't work so well in the mix. You can go back and tweak all the aspects of it with the X3. So hopefully this video provides a little brief overview of uh, how I use the Axe FX3 to record guitars. Uh, we'll do a follow up at some point uh, looking at you know, the actual specifics of it. Say we're going in and we're going to like quad track guitars on something, how I would approach actually dialing in tones and using the reamping feature there. But hopefully this gives you a pretty basic overview. I know this video is now over 15 minutes. So uh, I would say I apologize, but I always go over 15 minutes. So if you guys like the video or you have any questions or comments, as always, please let me know. Feel free to get in touch uh, over Facebook or any of those kind of social things as well if you have more lengthy questions. Uh, I've been Leon, you guys have been great. I'll see you soon.